Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus. I have been using it for two weeks and today I'll be sharing my experience using it. My favorite part about Samsung tablets is that you get the S Pen right off the box. Unlike other brands where you have to buy them separately, if you are looking for an upfront conclusion of this tablet, then I must say it was able to fulfill all my entertainment and productive needs quite nicely, but it struggled at times when it came to performance. Let me explain. Firstly, we won't be wasting time talking about the specs of this tablet. You can pause this video right now if you're interested in that. My name is Prithviraj and let's get right into it. FE stands for Fan Edition. We have two models this time, FE and FE Plus. The primary difference between the two tablets is the screen size. The FE is 10.9 inches, whereas the FE Plus is 12.4 inches. And also you get a better battery and more RAM with the FE Plus. Let's start with the design. The Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus has a sleek and modern design. It is made up of metal and glass and it really feels premium in hand. There are a few color options. I'm using the silver one over here. It also has external storage support, so that's always a good addition. There is a fingerprint sensor on your power button. Like I previously mentioned, the Tab S9 FE Plus has a 12.4 inch display. It has a refresh rate of 90 hertz. I really wish it at least had 120 hertz refresh rate, but that was in the case. The brightness lacks a bit to be honest. Since tablets are mostly designed for indoor usage, you won't really be having any issues. But in case you have to use it in broad daylight, then it won't really be a pleasant experience. The viewing experience on this tablet is great. You can pretty much binge watch all your favorite shows here. You shouldn't be doing that though. But yeah, the display is really clean. I really had a great viewing experience on this device. I watched a lot of Netflix and YouTube on this tablet and I must say it was really great. But I personally am not a fan of the speakers. It has a single pair of speakers on both the sides which is powered by AKG and it also has Dolby Atmos support. No headphone jack though. But I personally did not like the sound. I'm a music producer myself hence I'm really picky about my sound. It sounds very flat and the mids are totally muffled. The loudness isn't also much since we only have one pair of speakers. Overall I must say I was really disappointed with the audio. Have a listen yourself. <laughs> Now let's talk about the camera. It has a 8 megapixel back camera and another 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor. I really didn't like the back camera to be honest. It even had a tough time focusing on my monitor and it was pretty weird to be honest. Here are a few sample photos. Alright, so this footage is coming straight away from my back camera. It is currently recording at uh, 1080p at 30fps. To be honest, I expected it to perform better now since we are in front of the softbox but still very disappointed to be honest. Even in natural light, the video kind of struggles as you can see. But to my surprise, I really like the front camera. The photos had adequate contrast and the video from the selfie camera was surprisingly good. It has a 12 megapixel front camera. Samsung prioritized the front camera more than the back camera it seems. And to be honest, that makes more sense. So in case you wanted to attend Zoom calls or your online classes, you can do that here quite nicely. You'll get a really nice output. So the video you're seeing just right now has been straight up recorded using my front camera. It's quite heavy to hold like that. But now the thing change so when I come in my studio lights like I have the sort box over here everything else has completely changed I can't believe this is the same front camera so this is basically the low light performance of the front camera as you can see the shot is wider than what we had in the photo and also I just noticed that the front camera is actually in the horizontal bezel so you can very easily attend your classes on Google classroom or you can maybe attend meetings in zoom calls or something like that and also this is the unprocessed audio so whatever you can hear is straight up recorded from the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE plus <laughs> Before we move on to the performance, let's talk about the software a bit. It runs on Android 13 right out of the box with Samsung's One UI skin on top of it. One thing I like to point out in specific about the software, the default Samsung keyboard sucks. Literally. Simply take a look at the backspace button. I kept on hitting the delete button and it did nothing. While typing it was really becoming very inconvenient. I have no idea why Samsung wants to change my habits. So I ditched the Samsung keyboard and I'm simply back using the Google keyboard. It's simply so much better. I won't have to change my typing habits just for a simple thing like the backspace button. We also have this feature called the Samsung desk. It basically converts your tablet experience into a fully fledged computer. You can perhaps connect a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse and use it on full desktop mode. To be honest, I found it easier to control the media settings in this mode, adjusting the volume and the brightness felt much more accessible here. Quite a unique thing they have added over here. They are also offering good notes for Android on the Galaxy Store. Good notes is basically one of the most popular handwritten note-taking app for the iPad. For now, you can only use it if you have Samsung tablets. But yeah, it's in a sticky state as of now. I've talked about this in a different video. I'll be leaving the link in the description. You can watch that after this video. Let's talk about the performance now. I did some good amount of gaming on this device and I must say it ran very smoothly. Didn't face any lags yet. Asphalt 9 did feel a bit stuttery at 
times. It was mostly happening because I was switching between different apps. It handled multitasking well, but when it came to heavy apps, it did struggle keeping up. The Exynos processor might be the reason behind it, I feel. But while keeping up with day-to-day -day tasks, you won't be facing any issues. And also, I assume you won't be switching between playing games and editing a video. That would be a recipe for disaster. Also, if you compare it with the iPad, there is one major issue which I saw. Basically, all the games that I've been playing are playing in lower resolution. That is, they are designed for mobile phones and not optimized for tablets. So that was a major hindrance why the graphics look very weird. So this is one area iPad will always have an upper hand when it comes to Android versus iPad and stuff in terms of tablets. Another disappointment was that it has USB 2.0 and not 3. So if you want to transfer something from here, good luck. Let's talk about the battery life now. It has a huge 10,090mAh battery. I was able to get about 7 hours of screen on time. 6 to 6.5 on extremely heavy usage like continuous gaming. But one thing I've noticed, the idle time management wasn't that great. I previously reviewed the Xiaomi Pad 6 and I mentioned that Xiaomi was able to manage the idle time really well. But whereas in here for Samsung, it was not that great. I left my tab at around 60% battery yesterday around 6pm. But this morning when I checked, it was almost 36%. And also you don't have the power adapter right out of the box. I'm not even surprised at this stage. All right, so let's talk about the S Pen. I actually want to create a video where I compare the S Pen with the Apple Pencil. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel to get notified when I upload that video. I did quite a lot of note taking on this device using various apps. I was mostly testing out Samsung Notes, Good Notes for Android and Nebo. Among all the apps that I used, I feel I got the most optimum experience using Samsung Notes. To be honest, I'll be creating a video on Samsung Notes as well. It deserves its own video. If you wanted to buy this tab for taking notes, then yes, please go ahead. You'll get a great experience using the S Pen. I also did some digital art on this device. The S Pen felt a bit weird at first, but I eventually got used to it. So if you're looking to get the Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus for doing some digital art, then yes, you will get a good experience doing that. I needed to add a quick update. So I was basically using Infinity Painter or Infinite Painter and it crashed so many times, like literally. While creating this digital art, it crashed so many times, like I had to restart my tab two times rather. Let us talk about the pricing. The pricing as of now is kind of in a very sticky state. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus costs 559 US dollars. And here in India, as of now, it costs rupees 46 triple nine on Flipkart and rupees 54 triple nine on Amazon. I don't know why, but yeah, it is what it is. But the thing is that I only bought this tab for 36,000 rupees. There was a bank offer at that time from ICICI Bank Credit Card that helped me save that much. Keep an eye on the sale. You might actually get a lot of offers on this device. So what is my final verdict? Should you buy this tablet? Well, for the price I personally paid, this device is totally worth it. Especially considering the fact that the S Pen is included right inside the box. And like I previously mentioned, keep an eye on the sales. You might end up saving a lot that way. If you feel that this tablet is going outside of your budget, then check out my review of the Xiaomi Path 6 by clicking here. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I hope Hope to see you there.